Today we are starting to, to speak about the next step after the interviews, after need finding, etc. That is also the next step you will uh, need to do at a certain point after this first assignment that is about analyzing and synthesizing the needs so that the solutions, the problem identify so that you can continue with the prototyping, with the other steps, with the ide ideation, so the creation of ideas that will fulfill some of the needs that you will extract. Um, so this is, let's say, step one of the uh, something in between between the ideation and still a way to summarize and analyze the information in a way that is uh, for you easy to pro process and also potentially something that you can communicate to others and this class will uh, this topic analyzing and synthesizing will last today on monday and then on tuesday we will do uh, an exercise on this topic um, so today we are going to speak about task mm -hmm. so what are tasks and how to analyze tasks on monday we will probably continue speaking about tasks and then we will speak about scenarios and storyboards as a way to represent and communicate those tasks and the idea that you, that potentially uh, you can have mm -hmm. and, and this will also be the things that we are going partially to ask you in the assignment to define task and then to create a storyboard and continue with the prototypings that we we will cover uh, in the coming weeks but before that um, we have our usual or not so usual yet game this time not about interfaces but about needs Do you think you are prepared to speak about needs and to classify needs in good or not so good? Silence. Who knows? Um, so we are doing this, um, this game here, this version of Hall of Fame and Hall of, Fa of Shame here. Um, because you will need to extract needs from the interviews, from the results of the interviews. And we discuss about needs, uh, the definition of needs, we discuss about the faster ores and, and etc., the difference between wants and needs, and clearly need finding means finding needs. Uh, and then from needs you can find solutions, but one critical point is what is a need. So can we understand if something we want to write is a need or not so um, these slides was from last year so the, the needs that will appear here are some needs that your colleague last year wrote as a need and all we discuss about why they are not need or they are not well-formed needs etc um, so I, I try to anticipate that problem hopefully so we can understand so you can pro possibly start with the right uh, foot in the right direction for needs mm -hmm. with some concrete example again some of these will be totally fictionary others are actually from project of last year and something some are good needs some are not good needs that's that's why the, the game so two notes here I, I will show one need at a time and you will need to tell me clearly if it's more in the Hall of Fame or not, so if it's a good need or not, as, as it's written. And all of them are, are written as user needs, so that it's, this so, they sound like, they seem like needs, but no, no, not all of them are either needs or good needs to describe, and we can understand why. So, two notes. One is, uh, taken from assignment one, exactly what is written in assignment one and exactly what we said also in classes. Just to keep in mind, needs, so before speaking about analysis of tasks that presume that you identify needs and maybe some solution from those needs, uh, that is still assignment one. 
So from assignment one and from the slides, we said the needs are human emotion or physical necessities. They are verbs, activities and desire for which you can, people can use help for and not nouns because nouns typically are wants or solution. And in general, it could be useful, helpful to use the phrase people needs a way to, user needs a way to, or people need to be able to, or a person needs to be able to, to identify a need. So all, all of these needs that we are going to see start with user needs something. So I try to write them in a way that all of them, most of all of them, looks like, reads like needs. Okay? So this is the first thing. The other thing is this big beware here. Hmm? We are missing the context. Remember the four plus four equal not eight, because actually they were not four. Uh, we are missing the context also in this case. And so we will need needs and we need to image impossible context. Clearly, when you are going to extract needs from your interviews, you will have the context because you have a specific team, a specific domain, some specific questions, so you know the context, you know who are you speaking to. These are needs from which I know the context because most of them, again, was from last year projects, uh, especially my um, slot of the lab. Uh, others are totally fictionary. But keep in mind that some of them can be more or less tricky, more or less need, also according to the context they are inserted to. Okay? Are you ready? Yes, no. That's a binary question. Okay. That's one question that you should avoid in the interview, but this is not an interview. That's the easy one. Let's start easy. Is this a need or not? Who say that this is a need? Good. I don't have anybody to ask to leave the room. Who say that this is not a need? Okay. Why is not a need? It's a noun. It's a noun? That's... It's a solution. It's a specific object, it's a specific animal in this case. It doesn't say, if, if from this sentence, and this is something we are going to see also in other things, if from this sentence I'm going to ask you which are alternative solution to this sentence, you cannot come up with alternative solution because it's the solution itself. The sentence is a solution itself. Good. slightly more difficult. User needs to have financial help. Is this a need? Is a good need, a bad need, not a need at all? So it's, it's written like a need. User needs verb. So it's actually written like a need. So think about it is more a need or more not a need? And then why, clearly? That's more tricky. Uh, I would think it's not a need, because I don't understand what's uh, behind the definition. Like, financial help is what? Like, what's the goal? What would this help me do? So, who is he saying that he thinks it's not a need? because it's missing the goal, it's missing uh, something behind that. So financial help to do what, right? Uh, did I summarize well? Uh, other opinions? Someone that think it is a need. Nobody thinks it's a need. Somebody that has a different motivation. Do you all agree with his motivation? You are very smart. Um, yes, this is not, well, let me say that this, I agree. So that is a good motivation. That is, this is probably in various contexts, not a need. Because you can also write that in user need financial help. That is, again, the immediate solution. So this to wave is just a trick to put a verb in, in the sentence. Because I said needs a, needs a verb, so let's make it a verb. 
Mm? Uh, this is actually a, a need from last year course, uh, a, a tentative need that didn't survive enough to remain a need. Uh, but the key point is what he said. So this is not a need because need financial help to do what? Which are the, to pay for gym, to go to school, to, what's the next step? What's the motivation behind getting financial help? So even in those few contexts where this may be a need, it's a bad, it's a weak need because it's missing motivation, it's missing the next step. So if you came up with something like this, and you will, maybe not you in this room, but in general in the course, someone will, ask yourself, is there is something behind that? There is to do what? Which are the problems? Which are the possible solutions? So if you have to figure out the possible solution from these needs, which are the possible solutions? You will need to figure out a solution for solving a need. So which are the possible solutions from these? Well, one should be immediate. Giving money. giving money, clearly. Financial help, I will give you money. Solved. Other solutions? Make him save money. Make him? Save money. Like, stop him from spending. Yeah, it depends. Yes, it depends on the context. But yes, money. Something about money. Spending less, getting more, still having more in the end. Other solutions? It's difficult because it's actually either not a need or a bad need for these reasons. You can figure out multiple solutions. No? We will ask you five solutions for each need you find. And in this case, it will come up with two that are basically the same solution in just two different variations. One is get more money and the other one is spend less money. So this is actually probably not a need in many contexts. So in, this was just to give you the context, if I remember, this was a project uh, about education, similar topic of this year, not the same, um, for medical students, for which they needed financial help, not to, to be student, but to acquire uh, stuff to practice. Mm? So um, fake bodies to practice, medicine. So they needed financial help to practice more, to, to do something, to buy the thing, but then you can ask why they don't have the thing to practice. Because the reasons, and that going down with the question is the need that emerged in that case. So they didn't need financial help, but they need, in a way, the opportunity to practice more on suitable material for them. That was the underlying need in this case. But the group last year, um, which I don't remember which group it was, so it's not blaming anybody, arrived to the first step that was financial help. Because that was what people said. If we had more money, we can buy more things. And so they can practice more, we can have larger rooms, we can have more material. So they need money, they need financial help. But that was not really the story where the story ended. The story ended with they need more materials to practice. So that is more about the need, the opportunity to practice in more with the right material, with not uh, fake things. And they end up doing something in virtual reality so that you can have an endless uh, amount of material to practice and to learn at the end of the course, clearly. Another one. There are six in total, so we are halfway. Is this a need or not? Yes. yes. Why? Imagine solutions. How many? Tell me solution of this need. A faster horse. Uh, yeah, a faster horse. A bioengineered horse is uh, a need, a uh, solution. Another one. A bike. a bike. Another one. Uh, sorry? Uh, 
yeah, someone that tells you a more optimized part to, to read from one to another makes the process faster. Another one. A car, another one. Plane. A plane. And it was five solutions. Clearly, again, we, are, we don't have the context here, so we are just saying random things because a car could be or could not be if it is more about moving faster within a university campus then probably a car is not, or a horse is not really effective uh, as a, a way to move, but in general, you were able to find five solutions. And if you think, I, I imagine you can find more than five solutions for this. So if you have a need for which you cannot find solution and you cannot, uh, and, and also here, it's difficult to say what is more. There is more story about that. Yes, there is the context, but once you have the context, it's not like financial help to do what? Is to move faster from a place to another, to do what could be part of the context to, well, to do what to, to reach the other place faster in a way. So the story more or less ends here with the context in place, clearly. Another one, user needs to have more tools within a specific context that we don't know. Is not a need or is a need? No, or at least is a very bad need. It's similar to the financial help, right? In a way, user need more tools. Again, this to have, to have is it's just there to make it like a, um, a need. Again, think about how many solutions you can find about this. Probably not a lot. But even the case, so you're an editor in which you have not a lot of tools and um, you can provide more tools, uh, but this is a solution, right? So the need is not having more tool, the need is uh, giving more power, giving more expression, giving more opportunity to produce better, to produce a better work, to work better, etc. And one possible, let's say, solution of that is Let's add tools there, but not random tools, right? Tools that serve for that specific goal of this person. So either is bad need or not a need at all. But again, ask always, what's the story behind? What's the step behind? Okay, you are not so bad. So I'm expecting wonderful needs from your project. This one I mentioned before. So this is, this is a need or not? Yes, yes. yes it's more a need. Clearly, again, the context is important also in this case because it's say the appropriate tools, so similar to what we said before about more tools, not any tools, but the appropriate tools, the context is important. This was the one of the need, if I don't remember well, bad, that came up from the financial help. So after too many discussion with this group, they end up writing this as a uh, user need that is way better than financial help. Uh, always in the medical context, I think. Or it was, well, I don't remember. Either medical or uh, learning geology. So they need more tools to practice geology in, in a way without going away and, and, and excavate rocks. Again, also this was in virtual reality. Um, in augmented reality, actually. The last one is tricky. User needs to be able to run faster. This doesn't have a have, so user need run faster, run is still a verb, so is it a need or not? And well, again, we are always missing the context, but Let's imagine in a few 
context if you can how many say that this is a need okay how many say that this is not a need okay uh, so why is not a need someone But this means that it's it's a bad need, not that it's not a need in, 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 at all, right? The only context I can imagine this to be a good need would be if I was like developing a new technology for shoes, like I'm working at night with nine to make a faster running shoes, maybe. So that that would be a, a need. You are too much engineer and too much computer scientist. Um, but yeah, that could be one context, not the only one, actually. Um, so, but we are saying that this is a need, maybe not a good need, but we are saying this is a need. Any reason why this is not a need? Because that was, yes, it's a need, but it could be improved. And this is, it's a need in some context. Anyone to say this is not a need? No, not anymore. Uh, this is tricky, actually, because this, in some contexts, could be a very good need. Well, Nike is actually an a interesting case, but also think about uh, a runner, a professional runner that needs to run faster, right? So that could be also another context where this can be a sort of good need. And then in other contexts, it's, it's pretty terrible, because what means to run faster maybe is not the end of the story. Um, so it, this is tricky because it really depends on the context. So in the case of Nike, probably it is a need. Maybe, well, it depends on the story, clearly. But it could be, could be a need. In the case of the, the one that the answer is a car, maybe you need a car not to run faster. So it's more, we need to move faster from one place to another, then it's clearly not a need or it's a very bad need. In the case of a professional runner, that could be or could not be a good need. So think about the case of a professional runner. Why this could be a not so good need, for instance, for a professional runner? Could be a need, but maybe you can come up with something better than this. What's the question that your colleague asked before for the financial help? User need to be able to run faster? To do what? So what's the purpose of running faster? Is to win a competition? Is to train better? Is to arrive before in a place so that maybe a car or something else is a better way of interpreting this? Hmm? Because if it's about to win a competition, then the next question is why you need to run faster to win the competition? So which are the other factors in place? It's just about running faster, it's about training better or training more. And so maybe you are shifting instead of focusing on running faster to user need to have more time to train better. And then you can ask, what about more? What is more time? Why do not have time? So this is where the context, where the people you are interviewing are giving you the information needed to really extract the needs. But this in some contexts is a pretty good need. In other contexts it's terrible, but this, this is tricky as I said before, because it really strongly depend as it's written from this very specific context, while others are clearly not a need or more likely a need in many, many um, contexts, in much more contexts than this. This is really a particular as a need. Um, but I think it also did appear last year, I don't remember. Um, so, and I don't have any more needs to. So this is what you, so you will do the interview. So I'm, I'm saying this now to avoid to, to repeat this uh, 40 times for each group or 16 if it's just mine. Um, so you did do the interviews and we'll have some results, hopefully good results and deep results, especially if you focus on the core activity, on the core processes you are investigating. And then you will need from this pot of information to extract some needs and you need to write them like this one 
and then select some needs that are the deep one the most frequent the most common the most insightful the most repeated the most uh, felt by people the, the most important in some way and from them come up with solutions so if those are written in a bad way you will come up with no solutions or very limited solution or very similar solution if the, those are written like actual profound needs you will be able to come up with more uh, solutions that will be allow you to proceed with the project to proceed with the design of the application of the system etc okay so this was this um, exercise to to give you some other example of needs um, hoping that these are uh, helpful um, okay so end of the of the game and let's continue to speak what happened next so after we have the solutions after we have an idea of what we want to, to do in some way uh, we completed according to this the what is wanted or better what is needed that is the need, need finding phase and we can move in the analysis phase analysis and synthesizes that here the report scenarios and task analysis that are two of the things that we are going to to see uh, because scenarios are all about task and tasks is what allow you to proceed hmm, more concretely on your project and then just to, to remember we will iterate between these two design and prototype design and prototype and we will decide first what to design and then which level of prototyping hmm. and we will not arrive to the deployment but we will do a bit of implementation as part of the prototype but here we are still here in the before ideation before design uh, phase and the goal of the analysis phase so both task analysis and scenarios are some of the many ways to create design goals so objectives that will uh, orient your design decision so before designing we want to understand which are the goals to design effectively something that reply to a solution that we identified and something that this solution reply to specific needs that we investigated through interviews and observation hmm? so this design goal are sort of intermediate representation before the actual prototype before the actual user interface where to put the buttons etc 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 to clarify which are the endpoints to extract in a way even if we, we are not going to do it explicitly to extract the requirements the feature of the application so something in the middle to move from the solutions to the actual representation graphical representation so uh, also it's a way to communicate user needs the analysis of user needs the solutions and it also allow us to think about the interplay between what you observed what you investigated the activity that people were doing the processes that people were doing learning something getting a better health do something with ai that is more clearly general in a sense as a team and something that you are going to offer like a physical interface that people can click touch etc so something to try to close the gap between these two the activity as it is now and what it work or not and the actual interface that will provide a solution for that needs that extract from that moment and it's also a way again to represent and synthesize the results of analysis and to communicate these to other people that don't, that cannot read all the interviews or don't know about all the interviews so the first things is about task analysis and then uh, on monday we will speak about scenarios and storyboards where storyboards as a way to represent scenarios in our case um, so let's start from one question that is what is a task i'm not changing slide but what is a task you know you you probably have a list and task you have task manager 
to-do list that are made of tasks. So what is a task? Any idea? It's an activity you have to complete within a certain time. So sitting down on this chair now is a task. Might be. Might be. Um, sort of, what's missing? Yes, it's a task, but it's not probably a totally complete task. If I say the task is sitting down now, um, for me. Um, what is, can be missing uh, here? in order to achieve something. So I'm sitting down to, to rest. Well, to rest could be uh, implicit, but in this moment, if I sit down and stay silent, probably something strange going on, right? Um, okay, so the tasks are structured set of activities or high-level action, like sit down, um, so specific action, uh, required to achieve a user goal. That was the thing that was, uh, sort of implicit or missing. So in many cases it's implicit, in other cases it needs to be made explicit. And it's say what a person is important, because again, we are going to a certain point to ask you um, tasks, right? And so a task say what a person want to do. I want to sit down, I want to rest, not how I can do it, right? If I say, if I say you uh, open that door, that could be a task. I'm not telling you how to do that task. So how would you do the task to opening the door? You are sitting here, you want to open the door, so what are you going to do? Stand up. Stand up. Well, yes, go to the door. <laughs> it's, it's still high level, so do the steps, okay. the stairs, and then turn left, and then reach the door, and then yeah, open, but more specifically, no, that is not, in this case, it's push the door, yes. If you pull, don't open the door, and if you, there is nothing to, to turn, okay? So it's say what you want to do. And I know that this seems really um, fundamental and basic, but you have no idea uh, which task I've read in the last year, so trust me, to keep this in mind, I need to, to say that concretely. It say what a person want to do. So when we're speaking a task user interface, it doesn't say a feature of the user interface or a how to reach a specific goal, a specific feature, but what this product, this interface, this solution will enable you to do for a specific goal. And often within a domain, you can have a mix of tasks. If you think a specific domain, like, listening to a lecture or studying or enrolling to an exam, there could be a task itself. You have a mix of tasks with different complexity. So you have, to simplify a lot, you can have simple task on one side, you can have complex task on the other side, and clearly in the middle you can have moderate task. This is again not particularly complex, but if you think at a given domain, let's say uh, transportation, since we use that example. Um, so which, which could be, uh, let's say public transport, right? We had this example last time, it was uh, people, women, I don't remember what, uh, but it was something like people using public transit to uh, move in the city, specific domain. So which could be a simple task in that specific domain? buy a ticket, get the bus, find the um, station, where to get the bus, the bus stop. These are simple tasks. So common task, introductory task, task that everybody will need to do to actually complete, hmm, stay in the domain. A complex task. A complex task is something that is either infrequent or something for extreme users to do. And extreme users are the same as before. 
So what could be a complex task in the public transportation system? To drive the bus. That could be, well, more than drive the bus, um, we get a license to drive the bus or uh, get in the process to, be, to work for the bus company, etc. And this is extreme user, something that is infrequent but is not for extreme user. That could be a task. Infrequent, so something that happens maybe rarely or we hope it happens rarely escaping the bus escaping the bus like an emergency not because there is the controller <laughs> right okay yes escaping the bus because there is a fire because there is an emergency that could be an infrequent task so how how do you complete the task you should know so you need a series of step a series of activities to do to leave escape the bus because of fire or because of that's an infrequent it's, oh, well in some period in Turing was not so infrequent uh, but let's say that typically should be uh, not a frequent task hmm? or to pay um, to pay something because you didn't have the ticket it's hopefully uh, an infrequent task again okay this is complex task something that is either infrequent or for extreme user or some combination and then there is the moderate that is something in the middle it's not something that happens every day like buying a ticket or getting a bus but it's not even something that hopefully never happen or happen really really rarely hmm? that could be something in the middle hmm? no you change your mind okay Something moderate. Change the bus. Yes, change the bus, uh, not in the sense of changing the actual bus, right? Um, like I need to go somewhere and it's a multi-stop and so I need to understand where to go down and then go up and then pick another bus and then wait and what happens if I miss the bus written in some way shorter than this that could be a moderate task something that happens maybe not always but can happen right i need to go to ikea from here and how can i go with the public transport well you have to pick steps you have to pick the metro and then go down and then buy a extra outside of turin tickets and then get a bus and then the next bus will leave you in five meters from IKEA, but it's in the middle of a highly tra trafficated street, and so you need to get a bus for one stop to reach the IKEA. So this is something that is uh, a moderate task, the description, the steps of a moderate task. Hmm? This is not complex, but it's not so infrequent to change hmm, uh, bus. So these are tasks, and clearly, this, will, this should suggest to you that we are going to ask you for a simple task, a moderate task, and a complex task for your project at a certain point. So keep in mind this, hmm, this distinction we made and this example we made. So what is task analysis? Task analysis is the study of how people perform their activities, perform their task. And this could be both done uh, as a way to better analyze information coming, for instance, from an observation, or it could be something to, in a way, ideate, think more deeply about how a task unfolds. It could be a generic task like taking the bus or opening the door, or it could be a task related to a user interface, like booking an exam through the Polito app. That's the task, but the steps to do that and the things that can go wrong and go well and problems are several different. Um, so the goal of a task analysis is to determine what people do or will do. And that are the steps. So we want to open the door, what they will do, uh, stand up, do the stairs, push the door, reach the door and push the door what things they use if they use something if there is any artifacts anything that they're going to use hmm? 
in the door example, which are the thing in a way that you are going to use. The legs. The legs. Well, yes, the legs, but um, physical things in the environment. The handle, the handle and stairs. the stairs, let's say. Hmm? And how well they succeed, clearly. Hmm? So that is, again, related to the goals, but also to the problems. Hmm? That may have. Again, if it's about observation, it's about planning, you can also think what can go wrong. And so how can I minimize the possibility to go wrong? So let's think about the, chair, the stairs and the, uh, and the door. What can go wrong? So what's the goal? The goal is opening the door, clearly, to, to go out. Hmm? So what, what can go wrong? Hmm? Well, you you can fall through the stairs. So then reduce the height of the steps. Well, that is a, a, a consequence, right? Okay, someone can can fall if actually stairs have um, very specified um, height to be done uh, correctly. So yes, if they are not done well. Um, or you don't know that there is let's say, a standard, a measurement, you have to, to look if there are to avoid uh, having people falling to the different um, height of the, of the stairs. Less damaging things to... The door is not open. The door is locked. The door, the door doesn't open. So this will open because it's an emergency door, but let's say that there is some something in front of the door, so the door is blocked in some way. Maybe it's not locked, in this case, cannot, but maybe it's, it's, it's broken, it's locked. So what do you, can you do? Hmm? So we have the alternative to quit the room. Well, there's another door there, for instance, that we have seen people moving around for in the last half an hour. Um, another thing, think, well, we will come back to this way later, but think about uh, another thing that can go wrong in a way. So you cannot open the door or reach the door. Think about people. Well, yes, pushing the door instead of pulling, that could be a sign of better design for the door. Think about people. Mm. Yeah, this is, well, more or less, because this is not really about the task, right? The task is reaching the door. Yes, if there, if there are too many people, clearly it's, it's difficult to reach the door. But let's say, even in this case, the, if I can imagine someone being here and not be able to reach the door. A kid that cannot uh, high enough to do this chair, the stairs, but let's, let's say that could be one or someone of the wheelchairs. If I am on a wheelchair and I'm here, there is no way I can reach that door. So either I'm there or I will need to use these doors here in the back, in the front of the room. So if the task is reaching that door and open, there is some people and if you are targeting some this all these people you are excluding these people from this task you will need pain points okay i cannot reach the door well there is this one well this one is not okay it, there is this other one that's better why that one is not okay if i am a wheelchair why i cannot use that door yes there is the end all there is an handle, and I need probably to, to pull the door. In that case, this is good because I can push. So less effort, right? So even if the task is simple, going out through the door, there could be artifacts to use, there could be steps to be done, and there could be things that doesn't work. So let's make another example of a 
sample task a little bit bigger than cleaning the, the, the door that is clean the house. Clean the house is a, a task, it's a big task, right? Because it contains uh, a lot of things. So read the steps. What do you think about the steps? Are they good? Are they missing something? So what is saying the steps? So step one, get the vacuum cleaner out. It sounds reasonable. Yes. Uh, fix the appropriate attachment. So attach things in the vacuum cleaner if they're not. Maybe you need uh, a different um, accessory to the vacuum cleaner. So let's touch it. It's good. And then clean the rooms. No. Hmm? I don't think all of these are good examples because what if I don't know where the vacuum cleaner is? Well, it's your room. Okay. You, you can maybe not knowing, but let's assume that. Okay, so let's say that it's your home, you know where is the stuff, so you go, it's, it's, it's there, it's visible. You get it, you add the right attachment that is there, right uh, to the vacuum cleaner, and you start cleaning the room. Uh, and then, what to say, when the dust bag, so let's imagine it is a dust bag, gets full, you empty it, because it's full, and then you put the vacuum cleaner and the accessories, the attachment, away. Is there anything missing? Or anything that we, let's say, improved in the steps? I think that, the right, yes. Uh, maybe one just like a small empty, that you don't know where to empty it or what to do with the dust. Well, that is, that is more a problem on how to do things. This is a step. So the step is when it's, it's, it's full and it will be something that will be linking, saying something, you have to empty it. Uh, maybe the problem, one, one thing is about the, the dust bag is that maybe it's not full every time you do the cleaning, maybe it's just once per month. So it's not that every time you clean the room you have, there is this when the dust bag feel, gets full, but maybe it can be skipped or can be ignored because there is an indication of that. There is another thing that I think it's missing, really missing. Wireless. Yes, I mean, either it's wireless or with a battery that it can have, uh, but otherwise you need to plug the, the vacuum cleaner somewhere to have it run, right? Or you need to recharge the battery, and then it's when the batteries go down, charge it. So there is a step missing, at least a step missing. Uh, other steps you think are missing, are missing. Yes, turn on and turn off the... I, I get the vacuum cleaner, I don't, I, I put a new ac an accessory, I don't attach uh, the power, I don't turn on, but yet I'm cleaning the rooms. That's, the missing steps, right there. And then all, all, we can also say that clean the room is still a quite high level task. What is clean the room? Which rooms? How many? And what happens if the dust bags fill, fill, get full before cleaning all the rooms? So these are steps that can be improved. Um, and here in this case, there is another, if you want, small assumption in place. That clean the house is equal to passing vacuum cleaner. And that's it. So you don't uh, remove dust from the surfaces because it's not vacuum cleaner. You don't uh, use water on the, on, the, on the floor because it's not vacuum cleaner. You don't do any other kind of cleaning the house except vacuum cleaner. So this probably is more about the task of cleaning with vacuum cleaner, removing dust from the floor in the house that a general cleaning. So if we imagine a general cleaning, the steps would be more and more complicated. Okay, but these are the steps. And, and then you know, you must know and use different artifacts, different objects, and some of them are simple, and some others 
are maybe less simple. So one was what your colleague was saying, I need to know how to replace the dust bag. I need to know when it's full. So an artifact, and I need to know how to put it a new one. Where it is the vacuum cleaner. It's something you must know. So you, you need to know about vacuum cleaners, what they are, how they operate, what's their purpose. That's things that are known, but maybe it's still something that knowledge that you have. Uh, the attachment, same, if you have five attachments, you need to understand which is the right one for that moment, and you need to know where to use it. The dust bag we mentioned. And then you also know, need to have knowledge about the rooms, because otherwise you cannot clean the rooms if you don't know where the rooms are. So this is artifacts, and similar to what he was saying, you need to know where is the vacuum cleaner. So this is not a step knowing something, but it's the knowledge you need before starting the activity. And then there is the goal. And the goal could be very different. And it's where the person point of view comes in. Because what's the goal of cleaning the house? What's the, what can be the goals of cleaning the house? Why are you cleaning the house? Or if you're not, why people clean the house? To improve the hygiene. To improve the hygiene. So I'm cleaning the house for a goal of improving the hygiene. Others. To remove dust also, right? Is in this case, it's more to remove dust because it's just a vacuum cleaner. That is a very narrow goal, right? A very little specific goal. Let's imagine some higher, more general goal. It's point of view. Why a person can clean the house? Bring your point of view here. She, this person is waiting for guests. So I'm cleaning the house. Yes, I'm removing dust, that's the immediate goal, but a higher level goal is to make the house comfortable for guests, because I'm waiting for guests. Or I'm having a party and I need to clean the house after the party, probably. So, is where your perspective came up. And you can have a narrow goal, like removing the dust, cleaning up, for hygiene purposes, to a very wide goal that is having a satisfying evening, whatever it can mean to a person. So this is something that can also come up in, let's say, observation, in interviews, and people say, I am doing this activity because I want to feel better. That's the goal, and it's a very wide goal, probably. Another, we can say, I, I'm doing this because I want to lose 1.3 kilograms specifically of fat and that is another very narrow goal more narrow goal uh, and it's not, one is not wrong and the other is, is right these are just different goals that inform a task and give uh, an idea the perspective the point of view of the person that is doing the task that is doing those steps for a reason and it's the motivation and it's also the motivation probably to buy a vacuum cleaner in this case, or to use a vacuum cleaner, or to buy a product, or to use an interface to do something. So goals are more or less implicit, like in the example of sit down, or explicit, or in this case also implicit, but they are important because they give the context on the things. Um, and then there is something you can learn from the task. That are the pain points. And also here we have narrow version and, or a broader version of the pain points and we can have multiple of these. So a narrow version is, for instance, why I need to empty the dust bag. And from the pain point, you can imagine, for instance, solutions. You can imagine improvement. You can imagine possibilities. Like, let's do one without the dust bag. Or let's do one that automatically removes the dust in some trashes with a tube or something. Or 
You can imagine a broader version. Why I still why I need a vacuum cleaner to have the house cleaned up? Why the house cannot self-clean in some way? Sci-fi, but why not? So again, it's about also finding opportunities to, to improve, and also in this case, you can find opportunities. Again, this is easier for uh, tasks you observe, activity you observe, you can try to decompose, but also for tasks you imagine in your application. So while you're designing an application, we're designing the steps to do an activities, you can imagine which could be the, the pain points and it can improve it, can solve them in some way while ideating something to do. And all of this starts from the task to clean the house, and then you decompose and analyze the task in such a way. Um, well, here there is another example of task with steps, um, but it's, it's more or less, we, we said already a, a couple of examples. So this is about an overhead projector uh, for use, so which some steps this person can, done, can do, etc. Um, so here there is a more, let's say, formal definition of a task. So a task is a goal together with some ordered set of actions. Uh, and clearly some knowledge behind that. So the goal, we exemplify, is a state of the application domain, of the domain of the team, of the topics, uh, for, that works for a system made by people plus technology, and that this system wants to achieve. And as we said, it's specified to a particular level of abstraction. It could be narrow task, it could be more general task, it depends. Uh, sorry, goal. Uh, then the task is a structured set of activities that are required, used, or believed to be necessary by someone or something, a machine or a human, to achieve the goal like before, using some particular technology, some particular artifacts. And then the task is broken down into more and more detailed level description until it's defined in terms of actions that are the steps. And an action is a task that has no problem solving associated with it and which does not include any control structure. So what we call steps up to now and action are See the simplest form of task you can have. You cannot decompose them anymore. You cannot reach one. So we said that, for instance, we can uh, decompose, clean the rooms in more specific steps, in more specific sta uh, sta um, actions and tasks. So go and move to, an ad to the kitchen and then bring everything in the kitchen that is in the floor on the table and then... Um, turn on the vacuum cleaner, and then, etc. So you can, and after you have done with the kitchen, you can move to the living room and repeat. So you can decompose these steps in more simpler steps and more simpler action. In a way that, again, action or what we call steps are the simpler task possible that cannot be decomposed in other tasks because it's, they are so simple you cannot decompose it, if not just by uh, imagining strange possibility, like imagining how a person is moving. Mm? So yes, I, I move, um, ordering to move the, the muscle, etc. but it is intuitive and so it can be stopped at that level. And what you learn when doing task analysis, and we are going to see one way to do task analysis, well, just one, there are many ways, but mm, I'm going to see how to get a task and analyze that in a way to receive goals, steps, and uh, artifacts. Uh, you learn what a user goal can be and what they're trying to achieve. Mm? So if you serve something, you can derive a task and you can decompose it. And what people actually do to achieve these goals, what experience user brings to the task, if there is any cultural difference, any contextual difference, and how people are influenced by the physical environment. We said, if we need to open the door, we need to go out of here. Uh, if I'm a children, I cannot probably use that door. If I'm a person on a wheelchair, I cannot use surely the door. I need to use this one, and I'm here. And same if I'm in the back of the room, I will probably use that door and not one in the front of the room because there are stairs in the middle, etc. And how people, previous knowledge and experience influence how they think about the work 
the workflow they follow to perform the task and the pain point the experience to perform the task if i'm in the cleaning house example if i never clean up an house ever in my life i will have some expectations some problems some difficulties some knowledge that i don't know if i never see um a vacuum cleaner this mode of vacuum cleaner will be i don't know if there's a dust bag and how to remove it how to change it and when it's full similarly if i'm ex an expert cleaner because i'm doing it for work maybe i know all of this stuff i don't even have to think about which accessory to use to clean the, 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 the house because i know all of them and i have all of them and i know which is the best one for the work so my experience my knowledge influence how the task is done and how the steps are formulated and how the artifacts which are the pain points etc and well why it's useful it's useful to understand in detail how people perform some actions how people perform some activities and their goal whatever level of abstraction their goal have and task analysis helps in identifying the task an application must support and also defining or redefining the application navigation or the application search and how you move within the application to fulfill a goal to fulfill the task and also useful for requirements that is what we are going to use it so to imagine uh, something in, in requirement and also for the structure of the app what the app should fulfill as again as initial stage or prototyping but task is also be useful when we'll perform you will perform and we will speak about usability test at the end of the course because also there if you want to, to prove or to understand how much usable something you created is you have to give this to people and have them perform some specific task to prove your point about usability so this proving the usability pass through a set of tasks that people will need to complete and not steps but tasks that are made of one or more steps possibly more than one steps because you want to understand how usable it without telling them you have to click here you have to click there and now you have to insert this text but you give them a task you give you give them some objective and they need to use it to realize that task and you will have different tasks according to the various things you want to uh, use you want to prove in the application and clearly it could be very general task or more detailed task it depends on how in detail you want to prove to, to demonstrate at that point the features, the navigations, the functionality of the application. Mm? But this is something will happen at the end. But this is all about task. Mm? So not only storyboards, not only scenarios, also tasks will come up towards the end of the course. Um, this is just a, a picture that say more or less what would say task analysis is something in between, between observation, interviews, documentation, and outcomes for requirements for the design of the interface for manuals because again it allows us to extract information to sort and classify this information and to also iterate and define better which are the artifacts the knowledge we need the goals the steps etc and um and we are going to to end in a couple of slides for today so which are the characteristic of a task analysis the First of all, you will need to have some well-defined workflows, like planning a trip. So something that can be repeated or something that has a clear starting and a clear end point. Uh, that is also characteristic of a task, but especially for analysis. And we have some challenges. Uh, because we are going to design and then implement, we are going to create user interfaces. We are going to create application, not task and task and user interface task of components of user interface does not map one to one so one single application can fulfill multiple tasks and one task can be fulfilled by different parts of the application maybe so there is not a mapping one to one but still we want to have some task to design the application so there is some um, tension there and also there is the goal there is the knowledge that people brings to the plate hmm? that people can use the same interface or the same application to achieve slightly different results or do things in a slightly different way 
than another person according to the knowledge, the capability, their interest, the goal, etc. So these are challenges about task and task analysis that does not uh, compromise the importance of having clear defined task, but still something to, to keep in mind. And there are a lot of methods to analyzing task, one of which is observation actually, as a way to get tasks from the people and write down tasks, not a lot of uh, unpacking tasks, but just to derive tasks. We are not going to see any of these uh, things in gray. We are just going on Monday to speak about task decomposition so that we have a task and we are able to split it in subtask, essential task, each of them which is steps with goal, etc., and with a specific ordering um, using this technique that is called the hierarchical task analysis. And for today, I think that is enough. If you have any questions, I'm still here for five, ten minutes. Otherwise, have a good evening, have a good dinner, and with me, we will see you again on Monday, hopefully. <laughs>